My new partner Vivo is an online retailer of nearly all kinds of tools. For our first video project I received this milling spindle including control unit. With 3 kW of electrical power it is a device that is advertised for ambitious hobbyists or for professional use. With a mass of 7 kg and the dimensions 31 times 10 times 8 cm the spindle is definitely not a child's toy. Two wrenches, a plug for the wiring and a total of three collets for tools with shaft diameters of 6mm, one half and one eighth inch are included. The instruction manual in English which contains nothing but the most necessary information also makes clear that this is no tool for beginners. Let's first have a closer look at the control unit. This is designed for operation on a household socket, it should be noted that the device can draw a current of up to 14 Amps. The single phase household voltage is converted by the control unit into a three phase voltage of variable frequency with which the speed of the spindle is set. The plastic case can be opened with a Phillips screwdriver, no special tools are required. Press threads on all screw connections of the case make sure that you can screw all parts in place more than just once. All terminal connections are properly labeled. The most striking components inside are the large electrolytical capacitors having impressive 682 microfarads... ...as well as the large aluminum heatsink equipped with a temperature sensor for cooling the semiconductor components of the power electronics. A fan with a diameter of 5cm ensures that the hot air exits the case. An Altera microcontroller type EPM240 for which datasheets are available on the internet is placed on the mainboard. The air-cooled spindle is made almost entirely of metal and looks extremely robust. Only the cooling fan is made of plastic and screwed to the rear end of the motor shaft. The ball bearings are press fitted and can only be loosened with well dosed force which is why I did not take photos of the rotor. The brushless motor doesn't require any maintenance work on the inner components. The cable connection between the control unit and the spindle has to be made, only the connector for the motor is included. A mains plug must also be connected to the control unit via the screw terminals. More information about the wiring and high resolution photos of all components can be found on the website of how open is this gadget. The spindle can be operated via the control panel having a 5 digit numerical display. The frequency is set with the arrow keys, this is proportional to the speed of the spindle. The minimum frequency from which the spindle starts is 1.5Hz. With that the motor is running with really low power. Since there is no sensor feedback the motor can easily be stalled by hand at low speeds, the spindle is designed for high speeds and then you should definitely keep your hands off the motor. The speed can be right while the engine is running... ...or a set point can be specified before switching on. The motor slowly revs up to the speed specified by the control unit. This time span can be set via the panel. The current frequency is shown on the display. Also, while switched off, the frequency is reduced over a specified period of time to make the spindle stop slowly.
The same happens if the direction of rotation is changed while the motor is running. The spindle is first decelerated until it stops and then accelerated in the opposite direction to the given speed. A relay is installed in the control unit, which can be programmed to switched on in different operating states. Here it is switched on whenever the spindle is running, with that the relay can for example be used to operate a coolant pump. The maximum frequency of 400Hz corresponds to a speed of 24000 revolutions per minute. Fifty seconds are the factory default for the time of ramping up to full speed. The run out measured here on the 6mm shaft of a 2.5mm milling cutter is around one hundredth of a millimeter. While accelerating slowly to the maximum speed, almost no vibrations can be detected on the motor case. The spindle, lying loosely on the wooden panel, does not really move from the spot. The rotating parts of the motor are obviously well balanced, which can also be seen with the two holes drilled on the collet nut. Even if the acceleration and deceleration time is reduced to just 5 seconds, the spindle stays in place. External signals fed in via screw terminals can also be used to control the spindle. The logic level is 5 volts. The frequency can be specified via a 0 to 5 volts signal at the 5 volts in terminal. If a potentiometer is used as a voltage divider, this can be used to set the speed. The pulse width signal of a microcontroller can also be connected to this terminal via a low pass filter. Here I use an Arduino Uno running the software garbel to control the spindle via a laptop. With a 3kW milling spindle including the very flexible control unit, Viva has a powerful package on offer that can be fed with electricity via any household socket. 
More information and many high resolution photos of all components are available on the website of how open is this gadget. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.